Lemma. Lemma. That's a really fun word to say. everyone, your friendly neighborhood atheist here. The music you just heard was by a band called Archangel, a one-man band that plays some really cool instrumental tech death. I've linked his Bandcamp page below, so if you like what you hear, you can check him out. All his albums are available to download for free. So I'm doing something a bit different today, in case you hadn't noticed. It's just me for once. Today I'm doing the first of what I'm going to call my Lemma videos. In mathematics, a lemma is a small proof which is used as an assisting step to reach a larger conclusion. What I'm going to do with these videos is address what I see as common problems that arise in theistic videos. So for my next upload, I'm going to be looking at another Proof of God video, seeing as the last one turned out to be a Poe. As with the last one, it's quite short, but the guy talks really fast, like faster than Josh Feirstein fast. I'll be doing my best to respond to all his points adequately, but they're so rapid fire that's a bit of a challenge hence this video. Oddly enough, my first lemma is something I already touched on briefly while responding to Josh Furstein. Uh, this is when the theist asserts that everything in the universe is designed, or created. Uh, I'm going to leave the actual arguments, the cosmological, fine-tuning, argument from beauty, all the rest, aside, and just focus on that one assertion. Everything in the universe is designed. So let's look at our definitions. Designed means that something was created with a specific intention. Now, intention and creation imply consciousness. Uh, so far, we're good, since most theists will say that the designer is both conscious and intentional. But if we take a look at what this view implies, we run into problems. So we say, thing X was created by A, thing B created thing A, and thing C created thing B. Uh, eventually, we're going to come to a thing which must have been created by an ultimate creator. And then the question is, what created the creator? And now, the theist will say that the creator is eternal and did not need to be created. I I'll leave the larger problems of an eternally existent creator for another video, but let's just look at one here. If the creator is reducible, that is, at least partly made up of smaller contingent parts, which it presumably must be in order to be conscious, then it follows that something must have created the contingent parts. Since before the creation of the universe, the creator was the only existent thing, then it follows that the creator must have created its contingent parts, which is a contradiction since nothing can create itself. In other words, parts of the ultimate creator must have been created, implying that the ultimate creator had a creator, making him not the ultimate creator. But all that aside, there's another, much more devastating line of reasoning against the assertion that everything is designed. In order to identify something as designed, we have to ask a series of questions. First, we determine if it has a specific purpose for which it was created. Then we need to see if there are any known natural processes which could cause it without the need of a creator. If there are not, then we ask whether we have any examples of similar objects being created. If we do not, then we reevaluate our answers to the first and second questions and make our best guess. But herein lies the problem. Since the theist says that everything is designed, there must be no thing that is not designed with the possible exception of the ultimate designer. This means that there is no way to determine if something is not designed, since everything must be designed. So when Paley finds his watch on the beach, he can only conclude that it is designed. And when he finds a rock the size of a watch on the beach, he can only conclude that it is designed. Uh, you see the problem now, I hope. If everything that exists is designed, then there is no such thing as an existent, non-designed object, which means that for any given object, there is no way to determine that it is not designed, since such a thing is, by definition, impossible. If there is no way to determine that a thing is non-designed, then there is no way to know that everything is designed, because you cannot provide any support for the statement, it is designed, besides, it exists. There is a way around this problem, but it is necessarily self-defeating. To avoid this problem, you must declare that there are two sorts of design. Design by the ultimate designer, which an atheist would call not designed, and design by a creator other than the ultimate creator, which an atheist would agree is designed. 
and in order to prove that things the atheist calls not designed, which the theist has asserted are designed by the ultimate creator, are designed, the theist must demonstrate that the ultimate creator exists. The problem is that that was what the theist was trying to prove by saying that there was design in things that the atheist says are not designed. So, to sum up, to say that God designed everything means that there is nothing which is not designed, which the atheist disagrees with. In order to prove that everything is designed, the theist must demonstrate that a designer exists. But demonstrating that a designer exists was what the theist was trying to prove by claiming that the universe is designed. Fundamentally, this is why all the arguments mentioned earlier fail to demonstrate the existence of God, because one of their premises must be that everything non-designed is designed, which cannot be demonstrated without first demonstrating an ultimate designer, or God. Therefore, they are all fundamentally circular arguments. God is the ultimate designer, everything is designed, therefore God exists. Or even more simply, everything was designed by God, therefore God exists. And that concludes my first dilemma video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and you can expect my next response video very soon. So, this has been your friendly neighborhood atheist, and until next time, best wishes!